In this video, I wanted to experiment with an ice cold planet. And I created an unlimited game with just one rocky planet, which was like five planets away, so it was by default the coldest possible. First thing I did was obviously increase the surface albedo to almost the highest possible and reduce the core heat because I don't love playing around with dust. The heat temperature was still pretty purple and consistent, so I started by creating just a handful of comets and as soon as the comet lands it creates ice. Then I shifted the axial tilt to a low degree to kind of create an equator, a reliable line where it's warmer than the rest of the planet and I think that is going to be the easiest combination for me to play with in this challenge. Right away I put a temperature artifact and it did create a puddle of water. So I continued with dropping a couple more comets which created ice across the planet. I dropped a couple more temperature artifacts and you can see like a squiggly line in the middle because due to the axial tilt that is where our equator lies and that is going to be the warmest section and I put up to 7 temperature artifacts to create some puddles of water and I'm okay with using artifacts because it, it will be pretty much impossible without it. Now that we have water it was time to put some basic plants and basic life and I also played the cell stage to create a fungi. Not too long after I did remove one of the temperature artifacts to place a meteor shield which I think is essential especially when we have a low quantity of life. One meteor can pretty much devastate more than half the population and we don't want that. I let the game run and it was pretty steady for most of it but at the year 62,000 a patch of water was starting to evaporate and I was able to see like the creatures like going around trying to find water, find something to survive and I tried to panic, help them a bit, try to adjust rainfall or something but unfortunately that did not help. So a lot of parts of the water did disappear and that it did make a lot of these species extinct. I decided to place a couple more comets to maybe increase the water levels. I'm not sure if that would have helped the situation. And after adding that water and that it stabilized a bit, I created a couple of creatures again, but this time I decided to help a bit the evolution, especially with the plants. I wanted to make sure that they can expand the low water areas with a bit and while I was doing that, I was like, hmm, maybe I should create a photosynthetic animal. That way I actually don't need the vegetation and that they will be able to live outside. So using that philosophy, I built this really, I would say cute, but it's a, a, an interesting fairy creature with like a couple of legs and I did use a bit of bipedalism to make it stand up, a long neck, and then I also evolved a couple of other creatures including an herbivore because we have to have variety so this was like a more simple kind of life but it was able to have a trunk to eat plants and see what kind of life can survive within this cold planet. It did not even take like 2000 years before these furry neck thing started to overpopulate the area so it was time to introduce a predator. And that is where winged angel comes in. I mean it's more like a devil but it's really cool. I gave it like a strong jaw, added a wings, the pincers of crabs so it's like could swoop in and like kill the creatures. And I think this is like one of the coolest designs I've built. And obviously the single eye, I mean, you have to love this. Plus I did the scorpion stinger as well as the tail to make it really predatory. At the same time, I also started to create a new photosynthetic life. My goal here was to start with a water cell that was at zero or one degrees Celsius 
to make sure that I can create the most cold resistant creature possible from the cell stage or basic animal stage. And in fact, as soon as it became a life form, it started with minus 9 degrees Celsius and with the evolution of fairy skin, it was able to survive onto minus 29 degrees Celsius. So yeah, brr, it can survive a lot of cold. That said, I had a look at the ice snow areas and they were in the minus 30s and minus 40 degrees Celsius and I had no clue how we can make our creatures survive where there is no vegetation and super cold. But that was a challenge for another time. On a snowier area, I decided to focus a bit more on the vegetation to make sure that the herbivores can have something to sustain on and I created this tree that could survive until minus 4 degrees Celsius. So that was pretty wide. However, there was not enough humidity except in one tile. So I had to use an artifact to increase the humidity and have the trees expand into a little forest. When I returned to look at where the predators are, they were clearly creating a border and I noticed that our fairy creature has evolved and it resists minus 44 degrees Celsius. So that became logical. The winged predators can only resist up to minus 11 degrees so they cannot extend to the areas where our prey are surviving at a much colder weather. I also noticed that the teal creatures were migrating to a colder area and they now survive up to minus 52 degrees. Through natural mutation, they become colder and more cold resistant and I even found ones that resist minus 69 degrees Celsius. So I feel like there might not be a limit. Seeing how we have very cold resistant creatures, I decided to start removing the temperature artifacts. And yes, it did immediately start killing off a lot of the species within that artifact. However, we still had plenty that survived. So I continued to remove the different temperature artifacts one by one, except one. Shortly after, all of my creatures starting to take damage. And Although I assumed it was a parasitic fungi, no, it was because they lacked oxygen. And I checked the planet and it's true, we have no oxygen and we have some carbon dioxide but it's just mostly just nitrogen. I wasn't sure what to do so I added comet to the water maybe to increase the water level. It did wipe out like a third of the planet because of the comet's impact and I'm like, well, I didn't necessarily think about it, but I was hoping that by adding water, it could improve a bit the situation of the humidity, which wasn't really doing anything. It was still mainly that one artifact. My next strategy for this planet was to introduce a predator. The concept here is introduce predator, depopulate the photosynthetic creatures, and maybe we won't have too many things consuming the oxygen. I created this creature that survives on land, like the winged creature, because we are lacking humidity and that does kill off the flying creatures. I kept this on the ground and it started to consume the nearby animals, however, it was kind of limited in how much it hunted. After it went extinct, I decided to re import that creature because I'm wise and I had exported it. And I added the fairy skin to make sure that it can go a bit further out than where it was struggling. Unfortunately, that wasn't going to happen quick enough. So I started to have a look at how much oxygen damage they were taking. And I thought, what if I change the albedo a bit to make the planet a bit warmer? That change was a little too much. And all the creatures died at once. And yeah... I had to start over and I think partly it is because I had plants that died and there was less oxygen so they might have died quicker but regardless they died. Luckily because I had exported these creatures that I had initially created rather than starting over I was able to import them so we have the long neck fur thing, the teal furry one and immediately uh, walked a bit 
but it was too cold so I did still have to move this to an even colder place. I also imported the mutated neck version which was also more cold resistance, re-importing a bit of that natural mutation that had happened. And then I had a look at new creatures that I had from previous save files and previous videos, like the 30% mutation one. And those that were cold enough, I decided to import, including the very famous 6 set of legs, or well, 12 legged creature. Now this one was an omnivore, so it could eat both animals and plants. And it was great because I didn't want to rely on photosynthetic creatures. And I moved it around and was eating plants just fine. I also imported the flying ant. It's not very cold resistant, so I had no worries a bit about it over expanding too much. But I was hoping that it kind of depopulates a bit and yeah, keep things under control and maybe mutate as well, who knows. And then casually the best moment happened. The fairy creatures evolved to have no legs. So when I zoomed into the walking planet, it was magnificent. I feel like this is one of my favorite designs ever. The way that they just walk, and it looks like they have heads, but no eyes, no ears, nothing. Regardless of how cute they are, it was still too many photosynthetic creatures. So I re-imported the winged devil. However, it was dying because of high pressure and I decided to move it. And there is where I accidentally found out that you can merge creatures. How did I not know this before? And this created a pink version of that winged lava. It was more resistant to cold. However, there was still a problem with the pressure. And I think that's gonna happen with any flying creatures in this world. Since I still had one artifact, I wanted to think, hmm, Maybe I should remove my reliance on this humidity artifact, so what happens if I remove it? And the answer is, the trees immediately die. And because of the reduction in oxygen, there is a second mass extinction. <laughs> uh, it happened again! But by now, you know, we don't give up, so I started over and started with importing the creatures that we had previously created or previously imported because we know they can survive. This is not a matter of the creatures not surviving, it's about stabilizing the planet. I tried reintroducing as well the predator that I had previously created but it was immediately being killed by the 12 legged omnivore. I decided to use the merge tool with what I've called the side at night. And it created this really cool predator. It was still a bit too cold on the first merge, but that's not really a problem. All we gotta do is use the get and drop feature again and merge it once more. It was great still a somewhat very very similar design, but it was able to now survive the cold because it was resistant up to minus 41 degrees. That merge feature was the best predator I have created. When looking at the creature map, I was seeing all these flashing lights and there was like one creature that was surviving because it resisted like 3 degrees more, but as soon as I was looking at it, it died. At the same time while looking at the creature camera, I noticed a couple of trees. So the little water pond that we have without any use of artifacts has now evolved trees and that was the little oxygen that we could provide in this little world. Having discovered the merge creature, I wanted to see what the 12 legged creature from the previous video would combine with the silent knot. And it just. I have no words. It wasn't cold enough, so I had to merge it again. It's so silly. It still kept dying due to cold. So I had to use the cat and drop feature to merge it once more. Because this is how cold we've developed our creatures to be. And finally, it was surviving, minus 51 degrees. And because it is an omnivore, it's starting attacking the ones around it, and it could be the solution to depopulate the planet. After I let some time pass, I realized that there was seem to be a healthy mix of omnivores within the population, 
and I was hoping that this would itself balance out. Once again I zoomed into the game and looked at the marvelous silent non-creatures which now have developed colors. This is one of the most magical moments for me. I don't think I could have created this all by myself. I have to thank Natural Mutation for this. Unfortunately, all these pretty creatures were consuming too much oxygen and guess what happened? All of them died at once from the missing oxygen. Except a couple of babies that had like a bit more HP when the mass extinction happened. So we still had very different species survive in singular counts. I did of course re-import the 12 legged herbivore because it's clear photosynthetic creatures are not the solution to this planet. And there is an amount of herbivores that can survive, even though we don't have a lot of plant life. But before like the herbivores can really populate, I start noticing that the photosynthetic population, it just goes rampant, they produce so quickly that in a couple of hundred years there's like already masses of population of each species that survived. My final attempt to have this plan be a bit more sustainable is to add six oxygen artifacts. So maybe if we can't have trees and reproduce oxygen through the artifacts, maybe we can sustain the level of oxygen required by all these photosynthetic animals. Unfortunately, as soon as the creature count approaches 1800, they start taking oxygen damage yet again. Six artifacts and we still don't have enough oxygen and I tried to play very slightly with the albedo but we're not gonna fix this problem. So I decided to end the game here and take a zoom in one last time and look at these hilarious creatures that the game decided to evolve into my game and I'm so thankful for that. Thank you Darwin and Natural Evolution. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and I hope to see you around next time. Bye bye